Kelly, you are wrapping up your Zoomtopia investor event right now. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I want to start with this end-to-end -end encryption, which is a dramatic change. How will this change my Zoom experience? Yeah, so we announced at Zoomtopia, our users conference, that end-to-end -end encryption will be available in technical preview next week. As you said, it's going to be available for both free and paid users. And what this means is that you, uh, users that are on the Zoom client will have a higher level of security and privacy added to their meetings, and that the encryption keys will be generated by the participants' machines themselves and known to no third party, not even the Zoom servers. So it will be a really high level of security that will be combined with the reliability and the scalability and the quality of Zoom video and our platform. So now that we've sort of stabilized in pandemic mode, with some people going back to work, but many of us still at home for the foreseeable future, what's your outlook on growth? Do you see demand still accelerating? And if so, how much? So, you know, we've had a really amazing experience over the last six months. And I think to talk a little bit about some of the results, first of all, what we've seen is growth in this cohort of customers with fewer than 10 employees. If you look at our results from Q4 of FY20, that represented 20% of our revenue. And in Q2 of FY21, just our last quarter, it was up to 36%. And so that's a tremendous growth. And this is really um, you know, an expansion of a cohort that historically before the pandemic, we had really been primarily focused on our upmarket enterprise customers. And now as we've seen this growth, we're really listening to and focusing on these customers. And with that, Really excited that we announced yesterday our on Zoom, which is a, a one-stop location for small businesses and consumers to come together to host events. And we've all seen this. I'm sure this is happening in your household where there are things like piano lessons and yoga lessons happening, but it's been a very disparate experience. And so what we're doing is really trying to streamline this experience for these small business owners and their consumers to come together on Zoom and be able to have a unified, consistent experience. So really excited to um, announce this and to see where it goes. And we think looking forward, this is obviously going to be continue to be a really important part of our long-term strategy. And then in the up market, what we have seen is companies have continued to buy. They've expanded now beyond their business continuity planning into really thinking about for the long term, how are they going to bring their employees together in a safe, an efficient way. And so another announcement that I love from yesterday was our smart gallery. And this is part of our Zoom room um, solution, which what smart gallery does is we've all had this experience over the last six months and working together in this environment that there's been a democratization of communication is what I like to call it. Because when you get on a Zoom, everybody's square is the same size. And if you think about companies starting to want to go back and put their employees maybe in a hybrid approach and some are in the office and some are at home, how do you keep that? How do you keep that benefit that we've achieved and not have somebody who's like working from home and everybody else is in the office, like looking at the back of someone's head. And that's what smart gallery is going to do. It's going to enable us to have right. that appearance that we're still all on the screen together. You unveiled on Zoom, which is this solution for folks who want to host and monetize events. I know you said it's not um, initially material to revenue, but what about the mid to long term potential um, in terms of having a platform that can offer virtual experiences? How much revenue do you expect this to drive in the future? Yeah, well, we're at really early stages as we just launched this. But what we're excited to do is learn from our hosts learn what's important to them, listen to them, and see how they and their and their customers come together to leverage this platform. And initially, you know, really focus on the small and mid-sized businesses. But I think in the future, we're going to start to see larger events being hosted there. And, you know, maybe even enterprises want to leverage this platform. So I think there's a lot of potential. We're just at super early days of the cycle. Um, you know, obviously, you've now got Zaps allowing others to embed their apps um, onto the Zoom platform. Eric Yuan, your CFO, a uh, CEO, excuse me, yesterday talked about the importance of cooperation. But when mm. it comes to companies like Microsoft and Ring Central that are also competing for your customers, what is the line between competition and collaboration? Yeah. So. 
you know, everything we do at Zoom is focused on delivering happiness to our customers. And we believe that that means sometimes we really cooperate and work very closely with companies to ensure that our customers get this best of breed approach, but that we come together and work seamlessly. Um, a great example of that is our API integration with Slack, for example. But on the other side of it, there, there is competition, but we believe that competition makes us all be better and is good for the consumer. We don't take it for granted. We're very paranoid about our competitors and that drives us every day to be on the forefront of development and thinking about what we can do to support our customers every single day. And you know, I think Eric, what you're referring to also is Eric did talk about there are times when customers want to use aspects of other platforms like Microsoft, and we also provide an integration there so that again, our customers can use the products that they love and come together with Zoom for video communications and also our Zoom phone application, which are really the key components of our platform. Now, I know the team has been working very hard to improve the security features and shake off that sort of early um, Zoom bombing issue reputation. Um, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes of Connecticut recently spoke about racist trolls attacking her during a Zoom town hall. Do you think the company has done enough to prevent disruptions like this? And if not, what else do you think the company can do? Yeah. So, you know, we've learned a lot to, during the last six months and security and privacy is now front and center and embedded into everything that we do. It'll, I often get asked like, are we done? We will never be done. It is now part of every design, every product that we put forward, we think about this. And it is, it is ongoing. It takes, um, it takes diligence, it takes commitment. And it's a combination of education, helping that our users know how to best use our platform, how to best equip them with things like features and functionality that allow them to keep their meetings secure and safe. One of my favorite ones is our privacy shield that when you're hosting a meeting, it puts all of these features and functionality front and center. And it's also helping educate them about the best way to communicate with attendees in meetings um, not, for example, publishing meeting credentials publicly that makes them accessible to anyone. We're also working um, with AI to ensure that when we do see situations where meeting credentials are publicly available, that we're doing everything we can as quickly as possible to, to make those be private again. So we, we take this very seriously and we're spending a lot of time as a company, obviously always thinking about how to keep our users and meeting participants secure.